And next up, I'd like to welcome Martin Taylor, who's here representing the Chromaforms Art Collective, um, which celebrates curiosity and playfulness. So join me in welcoming Martin. Here's the photo. Which button? Hello. My name is Martin Taylor, and I'm the creator of the Chromaforms. And I'm here to talk about my new installation, Recyclone! about what it means and how you can help. <laughs> so a little bit about me. Um, I'm a maker and inventor with a background in mechanical engineering and industrial design. Um, and I started in high school with the first robotics competition, um, which inspires kids to pursue careers in science, technology, and engineering. Um, and in college, I built a solar-powered race car that traveled across the continent of Australia. We're in the middle. Um, and after that, I worked in corporate R&D, where I learned a lot about how people interact with technology. And now I've left that world to do chromoforms, interactive art. So um, when I decided to start bringing art to Burning Man, I thought a lot about why people go to Burning Man. And I believe that many people go to Burning Man to reconnect with their inner child, to rediscover their sense of wonder and playfulness. So I chose to work with inflatables, partially because we associate them so much with fun and whimsy. And I started by making small prototypes in my apartment here in the city. Um, and we would take them to the park, and we would let people play with them, and we would see how people interacted, and um, what people got out of those interactions. And from those explorations, I coalesced a lot of ideas, and I created the giant jack. Oh, this one. <laughs> So the material of the jack um, is this reflective chrome material um, that kind of creates the illusion of being extremely heavy. So from far away, people are curious how little children are able to pick it up and throw it. And that brings in people, and they want to explore, they want to throw it around and play with it. Um, and that creates those experiences that we love. Um, the name chromoforms comes from that of uh, chroma meaning purity or intensity of color, and forms being shapes that we recognize that we use to make sense of the world. So the jack had a few problems. One was that it was kind of too much fun, that it would just roll out of control. Um, the artery thought that we were actually stealing the sculpture when we debuted it at Burning Man the first time. Um, and they actually came after us to tell us to stop. Um, <laughs> It's a, it's, it was a little bit dangerous, so I decided to try and constrain the chaos a little bit so that it would still be chaotic and people could play with it, but that it wouldn't roll away. So that was kind of where the Zoa grew out of. Um, and the Zoa also has a light in the very center that's shrouded in a faux fur star. So as the sun goes down, light starts to emit from it and it transforms. So it reacts to its environment and it reacts to how people interact with it. It's supposed to be sort of like a large creature or being. So I've been traveling around a lot with the ZOA and installing it at different places. Um, we actually had it at How Weird Fair here in the city. Um, and I've been thinking a lot about what I want to do with my next sculpture. Um, and I feel that the ZOA had really achieved what I set out um, to accomplish in regards to play, getting people to rec rediscover their sense of play. Um, and I was also noticing at all these events that I was doing um, that there are just huge numbers of plastic water bottles, especially in clubs, um, at large festivals, um, and all these were ending up in the trash. And I was starting to think about how I could use these to make art. Um, and in some sense, I feel that water bottles really go against all the principles of Burning Man, that they are sort of the ultimate example of a resource which should be free for everyone being commodified, <laughs> that they also go against self-reliance, that when we have that convenience, people aren't motivated to carry a canteen or carry the water around. People existed without water bottles for thousands of years. There were no problems. And it also goes against civic responsibility, that the companies that produce them don't take care of the waste that ends up being created. And last of all, leaving no trace. The shocking thing is that only about 7% of the bottles get recycled, 
and most of them get turned into microfibers for clothing that end up in the ocean and are consumed by fish. And now almost all the fish that we eat actually has microfibers in it. So we're now currently eating our own waste, which is kind of a scary thought. So with this project, I really wanted to focus on solving that problem. And when I wrote the grant, I had no idea where I would get the bottles or how I would assemble them into the sculpture or how it would work. But when I started working on it, those things all came together. So you can kind of imagine that if you kept taking that logic forwards and you kept thinking about how you could reduce um, plastic waste and also what you could do with it, you could make a really big impact. So a little bit about the design. Um, we've actually collected almost all the bottles and we've mostly designed the sculpture. Um, so we're actually getting ready to start building it. So my main call to action is to sign up at our little booth and we're gonna have a really fun party where people will come together and skewer the bottles and assemble them. Um, this is, uh, we're using the frame that it's gonna be attached to, it's actually from my previous sculpture, so that's also being recycled. Uh, we used a, a rhino and grasshopper to generate the parametric design with all the bottles. Um, you can see a little bit here. Yeah, so here's a video of a prototype. So this is actually the very top of the sculpture. So it'll be 20 feet tall. And this is a prototype of um, just the bottles with the LEDs in it. Um, it's a reactive sculpture, so there's actually a computer inside um, that reads the rotary input from a sensor and causes the light to react to how people move it. So it'll create the appearance of a vortex rising upwards. You can actually go and see this outside. We have it set up. Yeah, I've been taking a lot of selfies with all the trash I collect, which I think is <laughs> kind of funny. Um, I really think that with Larry's passing, especially, we kind of stand at an inflection point with Burning Man, um, where we kind of have to decide if we're gonna let some of the outside culture in or if we're gonna export some of our values outside. Um, I really believe that these sculptures and installations can stand for a lot um, and that they can make a difference and can inspire people. Um, and I think that with Recyclone, um, it will be sustainable, but it will also be playful and beautiful and it'll be beautiful light art. Um, and that's kind of just the message I'm trying to put out there that we can turn waste into beautiful art and make something inspiring. Thank you. Thank you, Martin.